Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, it is a foggy Saturday morning in Half Moon Bay. But we are glad to be back in California, and we look forward to bringing today's lesson to you. If you remember last week, we studied about justification and what that means. That, that means that because Jesus loved us so much, he made it possible for us to be right with God. Through his death and resurrection, he paid the price for our sins, making us holy to God. And that's only through his love and devotion for us. And this week, we're going to study about the term saving faith and what that means. And three of the points of saving faith, point one being faith gives us the ability to see that we are indeed sinners in need of a Savior. And, and that through Jesus and his death on the cross, he paid the price and paved the way for our salvation and made us right with God through his death on the cross. We'll also learn that faith reveals that there is only one true God and that that God was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the God of the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament. And thirdly, we'll see where by faith we see things seen around us are temporary. Buildings, cars, money, fame, that type of thing is all temporary. But the love of God and his salvation for us is permanent. And so, Julia, uh, would you lead us in prayer? Sure. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to learn about you. We thank you for the opportunity we have to read the Bible. Some people don't have that opportunity. We thank you for the opportunity to learn the Bible stories and to learn, most importantly, about your love for us about Jesus' love for us, about what he did to make us right with you, and that our lives should be filled with having faith in you, and that everything here we see on this earth really doesn't matter. It, it's all so temporary. What's, what matters, mostly, is the eternal life you've promised us, the faith that we have by following you, we'll enjoy that eternal life, and that while we're on this earth, we are your witness, we are your disciples, and every step we take, we take in faith and obedience to you. Help us with that, Lord, and help us with this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, this week, as I said in the beginning, we're going to talk about saving faith. And we're going to be reading in Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. We're not reading the whole chapter, just excerpts of the chapter. But we will see what saving faith is. And we will see the Hall of Fame of Old Testament people who had a strong faith in God. So we'll start in Hebrews 11, verse 1. And we're reading out of the Children's International Version. So it does read somewhat differently than the King James uh, that we're used to reading in. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for. And faith means knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. People who live in the past became famous because of their faith. And these are the patriarchs of the Old Testament we're talking about. 
It is by faith we understand that the whole world was made by God. Single command. This means that what we see was made by something that cannot be seen. So we take it on faith that God made the world. It wasn't some mystical thing that happened. God, in, by his spoken word, brought the world into being. It was by faith that Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. God said he was pleased with the gift Abel, that Abel offered. So God called Abel a good man because of his faith. Abel died, but through his faith, he is still speaking. And he's speaking to us today as we study in our Bible. So continuing in Hebrews 11, I'm going to read verses 6, 8, 9, and 10. Without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God's call to go to another place that God promised to give him. He left his own country not knowing where he was to go. It was by faith that he lived in the country God promised to give him. He lived there like a visitor who did not belong. He lived in tents with Isaac and Jacob who had received that same promise from God. God was waiting eight Abraham was waiting for the city that has real foundations, the city built, planned and built by God. So we continue on in verses 11 and 12. He was too old to have children, and Sarah was not able to have children. It was by faith that Abraham was made able to become a father. Abraham trusted God to do what he had promised. Always remember that God cannot break a promise. We may break promises, but God never will. This man was so old, meaning Abraham, he was almost dead. He was 100 years old. 99, I think, is the correct age. But from him came as many descendants as they are stars in the skies. They are as many as the grains of sand on the seashore that cannot be counted. Reading 13, 14, and 16. All these men died in faith, and they're referring to Abraham and the others of great faith in the Old Testament. They did not get the things that God promised his people, but they saw them coming far into the future and were glad. They said that they were like visitors and strangers on the earth. When people say such things, then they show they're looking for a country that will be their own country. But those men were waiting for a better country, a heavenly country. So God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And in uh, verses 24 through 26 we read, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of the king of Pharaoh's... Uh, e e Let me start over on that. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of the king of e Egypt's daughter. He chose to suffer with God's people instead of enjoying sin for a short time. He thought that it was better to suffer for the Christ than to have all the treasures of Egypt. He was looking only for God's reward. So while Moses had in front of him great riches, great wealth, he saw beyond that and he saw the promise of God. And that's what he um, spent his entire life following, his adult life following, and uh, was the promise of the future. 30 through 34, it was by faith that the walls of Jericho fell 
They fell after the people had marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days. Do I need to give more examples? Do I not have time? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through their faith, they defeated kingdoms. They did what was right and received what God promised. They shut the mouths of lions, stopped great fires, and were saved from being killed with swords. They were weak and yet made strong. They were powerful in battle and defeated other armies. And continuing in verses 39 and 40, it says, All these people are known for their faith, but none of them received what God had promised. That's meaning the fulfillment and the coming of Jesus Christ. They did not receive that in their lifetime, but they held to the promise. And they took that promise with them to the grave. God planned to give us something better. Then they would be made perfect, but only together with us. And what that means is that the patriarchs that we just read about, who died in Christ, before Christ was come to the earth, and before the salvation, they claim a promise that God had for them and that when Christ returns and claims his own, meaning us, those of us who are Christians, they will be raised at the same time we are to go home to the Lord. So they all waited to receive what God had promised until after their lifetimes. Yeah, it, they, they had kind of an insight to what was to come, but it wasn't coming in their lifetime. But they held to the promise, just like we should hold to the promise that we know that Christ is returning. We don't know when. We don't know if it's this year, next year, or a hundred years from now. But we know in his time and his schedule, he will come and he will claim us and those of us who have put our faith and trust in Jesus will go home with Christ to be with God. All right, well, Rudy, what did Paul write about in his letters? Well, I think Paul was trying to build the confidence. Paul urged his readers to have full confidence in Jesus and in the deliverance that Jesus offered. And so he's, he was just trying to build and undergirt, meaning to strengthen their belief in what was to come. So their deliverance from what? They're really their deliverance from sin. Mm -hmm. We have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Every one of us. Through Christ's death on the cross, we are all made right with God. And, and what did God promise Abraham? God promised Abraham that he would be the father of untold people. Un, as many as there are stars or sands on the beach that cannot be counted. And he made that promise when Abraham was in his 90s. And his wife was in her late 80s. So she was past childbearing. He was past childbearing ages. But he believed what God told him. God said, you will be the father of many. And he held to that promise. And it was 10 years later before the event actually took place and that they, he gave birth to his son. And who else came out of his descendants? Well, we did. We are descendants of Abraham. And That's Jesus why is the descendant of Abraham. Jesus is the descendant of Abraham through the uh, bloodline of David. How many descendants did God tell Abraham he would have? 
as many as there are stars in the sky. If you go down it, on a clear night, if you come down to Half Moon Bay's beaches, or if you go down a little bit further south where it gets really, really dark, even if you go up on the top of the hill, you go up 92 and you get up to 35, even if you can get up there where you get a clear sky, view of the sky and it's super, super dark, the stars are amazing. Especially if you do it in the fall when yeah. the Milky Way is visible and, and you just get a glimpse of it. I mean, it's just remarkable how many stars are in the Milky Way. You can find a clear night now. It's October. Yeah. It's a fall. It's, you could find it if you can. It feels like winter, but I guess it's fall. <laughs> it does feel like winter a little bit. Um, if you can find a nice clear night and take a ride, the stars, you got to turn off all your headlights. The stars, that, that's the number of descendants that God told Abraham would be his. And I can imagine him standing out, looking at those very same stars, and just being overwhelmed by this promise from God. I, I'm sure it's, uh, it takes tremendous faith. And that's why we say Father Abraham, because he is our father. And through him, and through his faith in God, we are here today. So, God became known as the father of Abraham, the God of Abraham. Yeah, he was known as uh, the God of Abraham, and he was known throughout the area. And this is when people were worshiping stones and rocks and, you know, trees, whatever statues mm -hmm. okay. they had to have something uh, visual to worship they yeah. even looked at the same stars that God used to promise Abraham that he would have all these descendants they would use the same stars and find shapes in them and consider those to be pictures of gods yeah yeah they did the Big Dipper we can see that that's also the great bear that was a god and and so um, God took, took that false worship, those false gods, and turned that picture into something very different. He turned it into what it really was, because God is the one that put stars in the heaven. And God is the one that made this planet, and made all the planets in our universe, and made all the universes that are surrounding our universe. Nothing was done that God didn't make, and we need to always remember that. And I know there's a lot of teaching to the contrary, but the Bible tells us very clearly that God spoke and things were created. And Abraham was known as the God of Abraham because he knew that even though he might fail that we may fail we we can we we and we may even have doubts about god's promises and powers he knew that god never fails and he recognized his own failure it occurred at times when he wasn't being faithful with god and faithful in god and he so he tried again he he knew though that god never fails and there's no need for us to doubt either. God never gives up on us. He never takes his love away from us. And we should never give up on him. You know, you bring up a very good point. We just were talking about the patriarchs, the hall of fame of faith in the Old Testament, the gentlemen, uh, men and women that we just talked about. You know, and all of them, had flawed characters. They all made mistakes. They all sinned. But the one thing they did in common, they had faith in God's promise that was in the future. It wasn't for today. It was in the future. So even though we sin and we fall short, God doesn't turn his back on us. He'll pick us up, dust us off, get us on the right path again. All we have to do is have faith. And I know that sounds easy, but it's not always easy to have faith. 
And it's okay if you sometimes doubt and you pray to God and say, God, I'm struggling with this. And he will answer that prayer. Most definitely he'll answer that prayer. When we struggle and we we have a hard time with it, does that mean we're not saved? No, no. So what does it what does it mean? What does a person need to do in order to be saved? Well, that's just ask Jesus Christ into his life and acknowledge that only through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross are we able to have salvation. That's all we have to do is believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, ask them into our lives. And if we do that, then we have the assurance and the promise, underlying promise of eternal life with Jesus and God our Father. Amen. Amen. So, Julia, would you lead us in closing prayer? I will. Dear God of Abraham, dear Father of Jesus, dear Father of all of us, creator of the earth, creator of everything we know, we pray to you to help turn our hearts to you, to open our hearts, to declare Jesus Christ as our Savior, to recognize his sacrifice on the cross, a horrible death, and to understand that by doing so, he made it possible for all of our sins to be forgiven and for us to be made right with God. We thank you for that promise, Lord. We ask you to help us when our faith gets weak, and we ask you to help us every day to keep our faith strong. We ask all this in Jesus' name with great thanks and praise, and then we say, Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. Have a good week.